that. Come on, man. I don't like that. <laughs> so uh, to start out. Oh, that's about to work. Start out. So my coach always taught me, you know, start out with, you know, a quote, something that, you know, gets your guys going, something they can think about. So a quote that I came up with is, dreams become reality for only those who take advantage of opportunity. And I feel like that's really big, especially here on the island. So this is an opportunity for everybody to learn, you know, to expand their horizons and kind of figure out a way to, you know, make football more progressive here on the island. So that's, you know, really important. So to start off, the defensive mindset is the base of defense. It's all about your mentality and what you got to do. So the first thing is alignment. You got to be able to line up. Zach went over the went over the um, the techniques yesterday. Well, I'm gonna go through this one side. It goes to the basics. So I play defensive tackle, and my biggest thing is I'm in interior alignment. So I play anywhere from the zero, the shade, the two eye, the three. The four eye is more of my basis, and when you're getting your guys, you gotta you gotta make sure they're lined up first. Like I know a lot of times when I was younger, my issue was that I'd kind of be all over the place and I wouldn't be able to line up. And it takes the pressure off your players when they line up correctly because they, it allows them to play faster, and that's really important. Assignment: you gotta be able to do your job. One out of eleven. A lot of guys when they don't understand the game or they don't have good technique, they try to just go out there and do everything by themselves. And that's not, that's not how football is played. You have one job, and it's your job. And you have 10 other guys who have to do your job, too. And that's the real basis of it. Attitude. This is a violent game played by violent men. And like, if you got guys who are soft, it's going to show up on the field. Because that's how people get hurt. If, you got, if a guy's going half speed and a guy's going full speed, a lot of times out of 10, the guy who's going full speed is the one that usually gets hurt. And you know, we don't want that. One thing my coach always tells me is eyes are the key. So let's say I said I'm about to beat your ass, right? Right? If I knew somebody on the island that actually gets me, I say I'm about to beat your ass, right? You know that I said that, right? So you're going to look at me, right? You're going to be watching me all day to make sure I don't beat your ass, right? Yeah, yeah. So look at him. Why would you look at him if I'm about to beat your ass? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So that, that's, that's the importance. A lot of guys, when they play defensive line, the issue is that the eyes are everywhere. You got to focus on your target. Because <coughs> why would I be getting in a fight with you and I'm looking at him? Right. I'd get your ass knocked out. Thanks. The second part is get off. And we talked a little bit about it yesterday with Zach. We was talking about how to get off the rock and everything. But for a defensive lineman, Get off is probably the most important, if not the most important thing that any player can have. You have to be able to get off the ball because it puts players like, you know, offense linemen in general in a bad position because, no offense, but in the history of offensive linemen, they're usually the bigger, slower guys. If they're faster, they play defense. That's just how it is. But you the, say that again? <laughs> <laughs> they're usually bigger and slower guys. <laughs> but... Uh, the difference is that with defensive linemen, one of our best attributes is our speed. And in order to you know, put them in a compromising position, you have to be able to get off the ball. And I mean, that for me, a lot of some guys are natural at it, but that's something that you guys have to drill with your guys. You know, you, and there's a whole bunch of different things that we can talk about as far as like drills and techniques that we can use to get guys to get off the ball faster. So we'll talk about those a little later. Let me get two more volunteers, please. Thank you, thank you, thank you. <laughs> Appreciate it. So, when they talk about forearm football, a lot of times, let's say we're playing offensive line like Zach said, and we're deucing you, right? So, you just use your forearm to try to block us, and we're going to use our hands, right? So, can you guys see? All right, cool. So, do a double team chip. So, now, engage with him, right? Like, use your hands, like, strike him, build a base. You see the difference? Like when you use your hands, it makes it harder for guys to move you. But if you don't, if you don't create separation, and you don't use your hands, they're just gonna drive you into the ground. And I had to learn that, like I'm a really strong guy, but it doesn't matter how strong you are when you don't use your hands. 
appreciate you guys. Now, do you lock your hands out? Oh, yeah, yeah, most definitely. So, like, for example, I usually, come on. So, if I'm here, and actually, let me use that. No offense. You can't handle me anymore. So, I ain't a church guy. Yeah, you're all So, try to, yeah, do, do like that, right? So, if, I'm, if I don't use my hands, start driving back. Like, he already has control, right? But if I get my hands inside, I'm at the base. You see, now you create separation. But this is the difference. This is where the eyes come into play. Because if I'm, if I'm looking at the ball carrier, but I'm here, like, Zach, all Zach has to do is just turn me one way, and now I don't know where the ball's at. But if I get my base, I extend, I see, I shed, I make the play. It's like, it's that simple. A lot of times, appreciate it, Zach. A lot of times, like, even in our level, this is a game that you guys have been playing for years. It's still the same game. Like, a lot of times, the coaches that make the game more difficult than it is. So it's, it's really that simple. You engage, you shed, and you make the play. That's a good note. Coaches making shit more difficult because of them. I'm in the way. Sorry. It's a very good note. Feet. Now, Zach kind of touched on yesterday about, you know, you have to have active feet like, you know, like, like a boxer. You have to be light on your feet. But there's a threshold in between because you don't want to be too light that you get knocked off the ball but it says at the same time like for me you have to be able to make quick and fast movements because these guys you got to remember they're going backward and a lot of times Zach said yesterday that they kind of dictate what we're able to do and that's true to a sense because when we start getting stuff like what kind of set they're giving you they're oversetting if they're jump setting you, things like that that's where your feet come into big play because a lot of guys especially when they're younger, they take really long, elongated steps and they get off balance. And you see a lot of times what happens is that they'll take a long, elongated step. Next thing that happens, they'll cross over. Next thing that happens, they're on the ass. So like, what you gotta tell your guys is that when you're striking, you're coming off the ball. One, two, solid base. Engage with your hands, find ball, see ball, get ball. That's simple. So, when you think you're Superman, like, you'll find your kryptonite, especially in the NFL. And the biggest thing that, that gets guys, you know, cut and kicked off teams and not, and put on their ass is pad level. You have to be lower than the man you're going against. You have to be. It doesn't matter how strong you are. I can squat 700 pounds and I can bench like four something. But if I'm standing straight up, I'm not going to be able to move him. That's just how it is. And if he stands straight up, he's not going to be able to move me. Like, it's, it's, it's all about leverage. This game is a leverage game. <coughs> and that's what you got to tell your guys. You got to tell them to bend their knees. You got to, like, I was talking to Zach yesterday about not only talking about the football aspect, but you guys got to start getting your guys to understand things like flexibility and stretching and things of that nature because those things off the field allow your players to perform better on the field. And, I mean, that's what we all want. All right. So, tilts, that's huge. When you play a team like zone read teams, per se, they're usually going to set the three like we talked about yesterday to the strength of the formation, which is right here. What happens a lot of times is that when a three is set here, this gives this guy, which is Zach, a better angle to mash me. You know what I'm saying? Like, he has a better angle to attack me because he knows that the ball is going this way because, you know, it's just zone read. So, in order to prevent from, from your guys getting smashed is to push this guy to a four eye. Because what it allows him to do is it allows him to take the fight to your offensive tackle. Which means that there's no longer an angle for you to get mashed on. Because you got to think about it. When you get in double team, you got two guys that are actually, matter of fact, Zach. Uh, yes, you and you. So right now, he's a guard, so you're playing a three technique. So what we talked about before. I'm oh, sorry. I'll wait. Falls <laughs> off. 
Fifteen hundred dollars in an hour. Bye bye. But yeah, so double team. So right, so you you're in a three, and you're getting double, right? Right. You see how hard it is, even though you're attacking your man. Start well. You can start driving. Like you see how hard it is to be able to hold your base because this guy has an angle on you, and it's, that's just natural. So what you do is that you move to a four high. You stay right there. So now attack Zach. This makes it harder for him because now he has to make a decision. Either he has to work up to the linebacker or he's going to move too far and now the nose has a free run at the ball. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So we do that in order to make it fair because really like two on one is already cheap in the first place. But <laughs> you, take the, uh, you take the angles away from it and now it's man on man. It's not about how strong both of them are, it's how strong is the guy across me. And when you use that, it, it, it helps with run, stopping, and all those kind of things. It makes it real easier. So that's why I was in the fourth technique. So you can run it. run it. And sorry, the film is kind of botchy. I thought it'd be better on PowerPoint, but I had actual film too. The get off is what's going to put the guy in the backfield. Like if you're already strong enough, you're going to be able to overpower him. My my eyes could be way better, and my hand used to be better. But I'm just I just know I'm stronger than this guy, and I got pissed off because they kept double teaming me. So you attack the man in front of you. He steps down. You put him in the backfield, and really like I just put him so back that I didn't have to shed. So you can let it run. Towards the open side, right? And the open side is when there's no tight ends. So. They have me playing the two eye because I know that the run is coming towards me. And once you guys start understanding those little minute things about where the ball is going, how do I stop it, how do I move my players to put them in a better position to make the play, you'll be surprised at how good your team will be. Eyes. We talked about eyes from the, the get go. When you play defense, the offense likes to use a lot of smoke and mirrors. They try to make it seem as though. They're doing something when they're doing another thing. And what helps a lot of players is understanding that what helps me, this is my guy. And we talked about it before. Eyes are the key, right? So he tells me everything I need to know. Everything. By his step, what direction he's going. Most, sometimes even before the play. That's a good, a good example. Or even... <clears throat> Ramon Foster, he plays for the, he plays tackles for the Steelers. Ramon, whenever it was passed, Ramon would get right here, get a really, really elongated stance, and he'd be like this because he wanted to be able to kick back when it was passed, when it was run. I mean, he'd be just like this because he knows he has to push off this foot in order to you know start to uh, to run block. And it's just those little things that can help your players, you know, we call them pre-snap reads, that, hey, coach, what, do you, what am I getting? You know, you, as a coach, you ask them, what are you getting? And he said, well, coach, every time it's passed, he's like this. And every time it's run, it's like this. And what we call it is bird rabbit. So bird means pass, rabbit means run. And once you start to incorporate that lingo, it's, it, your players can come on the field and they can tell each other what it is. Like, when you're playing football, it's not a secret. Like, it's 11 on 11, like, offense knows exactly what the hell they're doing. Like, we have to react. So you gotta, we gotta tell them, we gotta tell, you gotta tell your guys to tell each other what they see. Gap integrity is probably the fastest way to get fired in the NFL. <laughs> because if you don't own your gap, then you screw the 11 guys that are, well, the 10 other guys that are playing. With you. you have to hold gap integrity because what happens is that in the NFL, the running backs are, are skilled. In college and in, you know, in high school, you can get away with certain things because you're, you may be stronger or be faster than the guys you're playing against. But it's a little hiccup in your step. If you, if you overstep, you get reached, and that ball cuts back, that's your job. And it's just that simple. Like A mistake in the NFL won't get you fired, but repetitive mistakes will. And that's one of the biggest things that you see with guys who struggle, and it's in all levels. You gotta get your players to understand that I have my gap. 
So, So when you're a zero, the shade, or one, whatever you want to call it, your gap responsibility is usually the A gaps. Whether it's the front side A or the back side A. Your three techniques are going to usually have the B gaps. It doesn't matter whether you're in a three out or a three, a four out or four, the B gap is their gap. The ends usually have the C gap just because that's the outside of the defense. And they're the playing, they're the ones that are playing force. And the biggest thing is this. You have blast. You have cut formation. You have force. All right. So we're going to think about it like in our zone read concepts, right? Like we talked about before. So if you're playing in, right? Start with ends. Your responsibility as an end is to play QCBR, which is you got to play the quarterback, the cutback, the boot, or the reverse, because you have to be prepared for all kinds of rezone options. Uh, I mean, rezone options, because you may see this back go, and then as a chase player, you might just just go now. But what happens is there's a guy upstairs that's watching what you're doing, and he's gonna be like, "Hey, coach." Every time we run our zone read, he's not even checking for the quarterback. And the next thing they do is he pulls it. Touchdown. It, 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 you see it too many times. Because this guy right here, if he doesn't do his job, it screws everybody up. It doesn't matter how the interior is doing. Because if they can get on your outside edge, it's a wrap. Which is why we call setting the force too. So if you're if you're playing the front side in, and you know that they're running the ball this way, you have to set the force. A lot of times guys will get their ass blowed out all the way over here. And then what happens? You got run seams everywhere. All kinds of seams. But you want your guys, our coach tells us, right before the hash. So right here. Because you can set the force here, you got like, Ten other guys who are running in order to stop the ball. But if you don't, what happens is that it cuts off the corner and the safety, and he's the last line. Like the safeties are the angel of the defense. And once it gets to him, that's probably about for our defense, it's probably like what? Jabril's probably 30, 30 yards deep. So that's a 30 yard run. Because you didn't set the force. And it's it's those little things, you know what I'm saying? Like people think that football is this grand complex game, but it's not. It's just doing the minute details. And when you do those things, it takes care of everything. For the tackle, for a guy like me, my technique is what, what you saw over there was like blasting. It's just being disruptive, getting up the field, and blasting it so that they can't run the ball <coughs> across my face. The nose is cutting the formation because he knows that if I'm blasting and he's cutting the formation, we're keeping the running back in the cage. So we, we have the ability to stop him from getting to the outside of the force before it happens. But sometimes they just go. Because one thing you have to remember, these guys are the best athletes in the world. And even here, you got guys who are fast. And when they get on the edge, nobody else can catch them. So you have to be able to keep these guys in the, in the cage and confined. That way you can tackle them. You get your pin and pull where the center is blocking down the nose. Guards pulling, other guards blocking the tackle. You get your scoop blocks, or you're playing nose, and they're trying to overtake you. You get your chip blocks, where the center's coming down, and the guard's coming down, but one of them is releasing to the linebacker. Let's say. Just simple things like that. 
And I say this, I draw these examples to say this, like, at the end of the day, this is the key point that I'll keep coming back to throughout the presentation, but your eyes will tell you everything. Because if you're not looking at the right place, that's where all the window dressing and the smoke and mirrors start to mess you up. Because that's what offensive linemen do it the same way entire offenses do. They're going to do certain blocking schemes to confuse you. If I'm looking at my guy right here, let's say I'm in a 2 eye, and my guy goes, and I just go with him, right? I just follow the guard. What happens is that he's going to push me out of the way, the guard is going to pull to block that outside piece, and the ball is coming right there because I have bad eyes. Because I, I, I took the bait. That's what they said. I took the bait. I saw that he was gone. I looked really good. I thought I was going to make the play. It was wide open. Guard, I mean, center blocks down, blocks me out. 10, 12 yard game. And that's where the, the, the gap integrity, the eye discipline, those are where those all start to play a really pivotal, uh, pivotal role. And then when we talk about shedding blocks, like I talked about earlier, you have to use your hands and be able to create that separation. You have to be able to engage, disengage, and make the play. Because D-line, it's not, it's not that difficult. Like, <laughs> we go forward, we go left, we go right, and sometimes, if you have limited enough, you drop back in the coverage. That's it. it it's, not, it's, it's not too much to it. But what people get so caught up with is that we want to muscle everybody. We want to use our forearms. We want to just look all over the place. We want to just blow everything up like a bull in a china shop. And that's not what this game is becoming anymore. Like, the days of where you're just running around smashing each other in the head are gone. Like, this is a technical sport. Zach talked about it yesterday. Like, it's technique. Like, everybody in the league is fast and strong. Like, those are givens. But it's the technique that separates, like, the men from the boys. Like, it's that simple. So when your technique is good, you'll be able to see certain things. Like, for me, when I, when I see that this guard pulls, I'm hitting the center right now just because I know that that ball is going to find a way to come back to me. If I'm getting scoop block, I know that I cannot let this guy overtake me because if he does, I'm going to be out of my gap and the ball is going to cut off my butt. So in a scoop block, what they're trying to do is he's basically trying to overtake you while you're in a gap. So scoot over a little bit. So right here. So you're probably playing more like a two-eye, right? So this guy is trying to work up to the linebacker now and he's trying to come and overtake you. So the key to defeating this block is here. Put your hands inside, first of all. Thumbs up. There you go. You see? So right now he's trying to overtake him. And Zach, I need you to. I'm going to Yeah. Okay. You got to make it a little Yeah, more. Coach, you right there. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the idea is to turn your hips into him, but not like where you're like this. Because a lot of guys do that. And what happens is that instead of him cutting behind you, he'll just cut right here. You know what I'm saying? So for me, what's up? Excuse me, coach. So if I'm here, right, and you try to reach me, see that? That's the difference. Because what we're doing right now is we're turning it. You good? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so, a lot of guys, they'll try to do this, and then you see how he's, he's turning me? That's what they're good at that. They're good at turning you. So what you have to do is, and he's lower than me, you see? Like, he, he simply... Watch your hip. Do it again. Watch, your, watch his hip. See that? I'm, I'm neutral right now, and there's no power in myself. But if I get lower, right? Watch if I hip. turn him. See that? Now, it doesn't matter what, he's gone by this point. You know what I'm saying? Because he has to worry about the linebacker because if they stay on me too long, the linebacker is going to make the play. So a lot of guys, what we do is when we get here, and this is what we're going to talk about in the camp too. We call this the, uh, this is a, this is cut off, base cut off. So you here, and tell your guys to do this. So keep your hands on it. Right here, and just do that. You know what I'm saying? Because now <coughs> you're keeping this clear to do this motion, right? 
So, you ready? Yeah. Like that. You know what I'm saying? Because if we don't clear this hip, what's going to happen is this. So if I don't do this, I'm going to be here and he's going to catch me. But if I find a way to get in here, turn like that, he can't touch me. And that's the difference. You just cover and gap them? Just the outside yeah, gap. so see, that's what they're trying to do. What the it, it's not my responsibility anymore, exactly. you know what I'm saying? So, that's a good question though. Just the way the, the block is coming, so he's reaching out to you, you're gonna cover. Yeah, so, I'll show it this way. So, remember, I'm playing the nose, right? I'm in a two eye. And where's my gap? I got the A gap, right? So my gap is right here. And he's trying, to, what they're trying to do is they're trying to influence me out of my gap. Because if he cuts me off like this, what happens is now that I'm behind and he's in front. And if I'm the run back, so play the run back, coach. So, center again. So just act like you're trying to really go half speed, all right? So, go ahead. So you're trying to reach me, but if I'm behind you, right, go. Is that simple, you know what I'm saying? Like that's where the ball's gonna go. And technically, that's my gap, because what, they, what offenses try to do, they try to move your gap and make you feel as though like, Oh yeah, I'm still here, but you're, you think you're still in your gap? Because it started here, right? You started here in the A gap, but now they've moved it to where the B gap was. But that's still your gap because it's the A gap still. And that's where a lot of guys get confused. Like they say, well, I was here, coach. No, but your gap moved. And that's the difference. So if I'm in my A gap and Zach's the guard, and if, I, if, I'm, playing, if I'm playing a two eye now, this is still my gap. So I'm here, Zach goes, I'm like this now, because what happens is that at some point he has to make a decision. Separation. And that's where the the basis starts to come. Like and that's if we all and if we both get back in, if we both stay here, he won. Because that linebacker is making a TFL. Because a lot of time and a D line is a lot of a lot of people look at stats, you know, tackles for loss and sacks and all those kind of things. But a lot, some guy, especially when you play nose. Mm -hmm. Nose is a position where you're not going to get all the glory, you know what I'm saying? Just because sometimes you got to do the dirty work as a D lineman. Because you know you got linebackers, you got safety, you got corners. You got other guys who are supposed to fly around and help you make the play too. So like you have to be able to understand that if I'm here, I'm doing my job, I'm in my gap. My, my homeboy got to make the play because you know they're getting paid too. <laughs> so. <laughs> So, um, let's see. Uh, all right, so I'm gonna need you again, Coach. I'm gonna need one more person. Cool. All right. So, move up, son. Just you. You guys. You you are O. So you guard, Coach. You're gonna be in the backfield. Is that play guard? Hmm. So. What we're looking at right here is probably going to be pin and pull, right? So, so some teams when you when we when we talk about stopping the run, right? They're going to do a lot of teams like to run power, you know, power part where you got the guard pull, center block down, then you double team with three techniques, right? So if I'm playing the nose and Zach pulls, right? You're supposed to block down. Now what guys will do is this, they'll just fly up because it looks good. You know what I'm saying? Like somebody's about to throw you some ass and you see it and you're ready to take it. It's a trap. It's not that easy. Like so what it is is that Zach pulls, instead of just flying up the field like this, if I fly up, the running back is going straight, straight down. That easy. You know what I'm saying? And a lot of guys do that. The difference is if I see, as soon as I see Zach do this motion right here, you know what I'm saying? As soon as he does this, I know it's pull. And a lot of times we talk about, we talk about pre-snap reads, right? So if I'm a guy like Zach, right? Zach's a bigger guy, right? You know, kind of big. So, uh, <laughs> so a guy like him, he's not his his uh, his pull stance is gonna be different than his run stance. You know what I'm saying? Like, he's gonna be a little more back. He's not gonna have that much weight on his head. He's gonna be like right here. To be able to do this, 
Because if you had all this weight, it's just too hard to make that step. You know what I'm saying? So that's that's where you get your pre-snap reads at. So if I see Zach like this, I already know he's pulling. And if I know he's pulling, where's that? All right, go. One more time. <laughs> you want to pre -stand? Yeah. Say, huh? Go up. See that? That's all you got to do. You just got to take a step and stay here. Cause, and I saw you say shed, right? You, said you can only shed. cross when the ball crosses your face. Because, yeah. coach, play defensive tackle, please. So let's say I'm the running back. Uh, yep. Go through it again. Yep. Coach, just uh, okay, so act like you're going to cross, right? All so right. take up. They have that ability. You know what I'm saying? Like, the backs in the NFL will see that. Because, like, if I see a guy that's crossing right now, I know that what happened? Yeah, he lost goal. his gap, right? Yeah. And what we talk about? Yeah, gap integrity. integrity. So, even though I'm thinking I'm doing right, like, I don't see him, I see what the, I know the play, I know he's pulling, and I go like that, what happens is now you've just blocked yourself. Watch out, coach. So you just basically, you you grab him, pull that, you turned yourself out. Now what happened? You know what I'm saying? So Larry, before you cross, then you just wait. You have to wait. You have to see the ball cross your face. You know what I'm saying? Le'Veon. Perfect example. Le'Veon. Perfect example. Le'Veon Bell, like, he does that. Like, he's a patient back. And there's gonna, I'm telling you, as the island progresses and you guys get better with football, you're going to start getting players that are special and have special abilities, like are, they're good at certain things, and then you're going to wonder, like, how can we stop this kid? Gap integrity, shedding blocks, things of that nature. Because just like they have a plan, we got to have a plan to understand how we have to execute. So I think the next block really, I mean, most of them are the same. All right, we'll talk about the double team because that's a pretty – that's what a lot of times when you play running football, especially in the interior line, you're going to get double teamed. So, huh? Power. So, remember when I talked about the four eye, right? I talked about eliminating the angles from your blocker. What you think this foot? Your three technique? I'm a four eye, just okay. because I just know you guys are double. Just, do, just, just pick it up for the inside foot and pick it up and put it back up for it, okay? We'll start at three, though, sorry. Okay. All right, so talking about stopping the run, right? What's the difference? Okay. When you stop the run, the first thing are your, your hands, or well, your eyes, your hands, your feet, right? Not too big. So let's rotate this. Yep, so you see it. Try to keep that base. All right, so if I'm here, I'm playing. Uh, you're, so you move up, yes. you move back. All right. So I'm playing the three technique, right? So I know that Zach has the angle black angle on me, and you're the running back coach. So uh, yeah, you can line on that side. All right. I know the ball is coming this way. I know it's coming this way. Appreciate it. I know the ball is coming this way, right? A lot of guys and a lot of coaches they don't teach the tilt stuff that we talked about. They just say, all right, you in the three, just go. So they're double teaming me, I'm here. Like I'm holding my base, but you know, Zach has an angle on me. And, and the good guys, what they're gonna do, they're gonna punch you in the kidney. And that shit hurt. Like, this is how it goes. They're gonna do all types of stuff. They're gonna get you right on that hip and drive you. And they're, they're, they're trained to attack the hip. The hip, the way human anatomy is, it gives. That's just how it is. So, what we can do is a couple of things. The first thing I like to do is if you got the strong kids, you know, the kids that are, you know, stronger than everybody, what they're going to do is this. They're going to try to do this. The flippers, the iron cross is what we call them. They try to take on two. Go ahead and show them what happens. You get thrown out the club. The second way people do it, they attack it. Drop a knee and come through. But the thing with the knee is I don't like it just because it kind of puts you in a compromising position if it buck yeah, exactly. If it buckles or if you're playing against a dirty guard and he sees that you drop the knee and he falls on it. Like you know what I'm saying? Like, cause 
their job is to sometimes they gotta get you out the game. Like, and this is what it is. For me, what I like to do is two things. So if I don't have a tilt, I'm gonna align real tight. Cause I know that you gotta make a decision. And if you double team me, you gotta separate the blocking surface. You gotta make them uneven. Because when they're together, it's a lot of weight. But if you step at me and I hit you right here, what happens now? Like, he got to go and the play is dead. You know what I'm saying? But if you don't do that, what's going to happen is that they're just going to keep doing this. They're going to keep driving, keep driving, keep driving because they're on the same level. So what you got to tell your guys at the beginning is I'm here. I see this guy. This is my target. I know he's double teaming. I know the back to I know all that kind of stuff. I know I'm getting double teamed. I got to attack his outside shoulder here and drive. Because what's going to happen is that's going to create that separation we talked about, right? Because if you don't create separation, this is what's going to happen. You're going to get here, you're going to strike, and you're going to get blocked. But that separation here, that extension, causes you to make plays. So basically just pick one bully and make the play in the back door. The yeah, kind of. Only because not everybody going to let you bully them. Like, you, you can't always bully the bully. Like, yeah. and Because there are some bullies out there. So that's what we talk about, the tilts. Because that's what makes it even. Because you got to remember that the hardest block in football is when I'm a three technique, and this guy slant like bump blocks me, right? So bump on me, just, you see what happened? It takes, it's, it's that quick. He hits me in my hip, my hip gives, ball's gone, right? So to combat that, I'm here, I strike, I turn my hips, I come across, I make the play. Because he can't, once, once I turn that hip, it's like we're right here. So I'm here, I take my step. I'm here. My bad is that. No, you're fine, bro. And I'm turning. And as soon as I, he has to make a decision now. And then I just swipe off. When I'm in the four eye, it's the same thing. It's just the opposite. If I'm blasting, I'm lined up on Zach, I'm lined up on his outside foot. I know that he's coming now. And he's here to help. I take a step at Zach, I turn, I give him that, turn around. Make the play. And realistically, too, this guy can't, and this is why teams line up in the four-eye, right? When he lines up in that four-eye, that he can't, if we're deucing to that backside backer, he can't pick his foot up down and go this way and expect to come back fast enough to make it to that backside linebacker. So that's why he's talking about tilts and four-eyes and sometimes changing it up. If they think power is coming, sometimes that three <laughs> will turn into a quote-unquote wide three or a four-eye to help cause that separation that Larry's talking about. Because without separation, you're not going to make any plays. It's just that simple. You have to find a way to separate yourself from the blockers and, and make the, the blocking surface uneven. That way you can make the play. Because that, that's, that's all run football is, is creating separation, uneven blocking levels, making the play in the backfield. Because once you master that, that's when you start making plays. But the first part is that first alignment of my guy. I see him, I attack the outside shoulder. I find a way to turn that hip into him. So he can't, he can't bump block me. Because the bump block is, I'm telling you guys, like as the island advances and you guys get like more offensive coordinators, more defensive coordinators, like they're gonna coach that to where you got a guy and you're wondering why they keep running the ball to the, start, uh, to the strength of the formation. They keep running to your three technique. Because what's happening is that every time your three technique takes a step, he's getting bumped. And that little bump is enough for a running back to, to cut the edge. Because what you're doing is you're shrinking the line. You know what I'm saying? Because now, if I'm a running back, Coach, play the tackle real quick? Yeah. Or whoever wants to play. If I'm a running back, right? So, uh, Zach, let him blast, but don't block him, right? So if I'm running back and I'm here and he blasts, go ahead, I'm, I got to hesitate because now it's like I don't know what's happening because he's, he's, he's made the blocking surface uneven. And now I got to stop. I got to stutter my feet. I got to do all that. 
But if they bump block him, so get bump block, boom. It made it just made <laughs> it just made the it made the line shorter. You know what I'm saying? And like Zach said yesterday, the fastest way to the quarterback is what? A straight line, right? Well, if you shrink that line, it's the same way for the running back to the end zone. And that's how you got to look at it. Because what they're trying to do is they're trying to compress the time and distance for the back to get to the edge in order to, to, to get to the edge because they know that it takes a while for the outside of the defense to catch up. That's why we talked about setting the force and cutting the formation and blasting because we're trying to keep those guys in that cage. So you split the difference first, right? So our next technique is dominating one. Try to dominate one to get through for the double team, to break the double team. He, he technically is kind of dominating two. At first, yes, initial contact is on the guard, right, yeah. or whoever he is. Yeah. But yeah. as a tackle, yeah. let's say you're playing a three, and you do get good penetration. Yeah. That's for him. Yeah. For me, but. it's that. Yeah. It's him getting his butt in there. So it's kind of like, and that's why he told him when he was like, so basically focus on one guy. Yes, but not really, because that hip, when he throws that hip in there. It's for him. I can't, when he's in a base and he has his ass in the hole like that, I'm not going to be able to get him out the way yeah. in enough time. You know what I mean? I'm gone. If he gets he that, has I'm another gone. Responsibility. Because it's really too, like, you know, understanding the offensive line, me and him are deucing to the backside line. Yeah. I got to get there. Okay. Yeah. I just want to, ex when I'm explaining to my kids, I want to, I just yeah. want to explain. So that. that's why I don't focus on, that's why he said it's not really on one guy. Initial block, yes. And initial tell tells, like, I'll tell you an example for this guy, and he's really good at doing it, and so are the guys on our defensive line, and that's why we're so dominant defensively. They're looking in my fucking eyes in practice. Like, he is staring at me because I'm not coming up the line worried about him. I know he's a three technique, but when I first got there, I'm looking towards that backside linebacker because we need to focus on who we're going to. Yeah. So if he sees me as a tackle doing that and he's that three technique, he's already knowing that deuce is coming. And then, he, and then he's calling uh, rabbit, rabbit, rabbit for the rest of those guys to know that it's a run. Mm -hmm. All those type of things tell you exactly what they're doing before they do it. But that comes from film <laughs> study and watching and practice and all those kind of things. The second thing is get off. You got to get off the ball because you got to remember they know where they're going. But our advantage as defensive players is our get off because if we – hit them before they hit us, we've already won half the battle. Hands, feet, get off, the center's in the backfield. The center runs into the running back, the running back falls. Like, I don't make the play because I didn't get the tackle, but because of me displacing my guy and getting them on different levels, second down, you know what I'm saying? So that, that's how you gotta train your guys. Like, you're not gonna make every play. But you can, in a sense, you get what I'm saying, by doing your job. Every time, I'm just speed rushing, speed rushing, speed rushing, speed rushing. Every time, Zach steps, I'm gone. Speed rushing, trying to bend the corner. So finally, Zach gets tired of me speed rushing, right? So he's like, you know what, I'm going to jump out and get him. So I step here, inside move. You got to set it up, though. A lot of guys, first play of the game, they going here, they stepping inside, and Zach, remember what Zach talked about, that hand. If I take a step, boom here, and Zach hit me with that hand, it's too early, because I haven't, I haven't given him any reason to give up his inside. You got to make him think that I'm coming here every time. I'm coming, I'm coming, I'm coming. And then the one time I'm not, I'm here. And once you do that, that's how you start getting sacked. But it's a, it's a mind game. Me and him are in a, when we're in a chess match. We're trying to figure out what each other are doing, and once we find out, that's how that's how you start winning. Because there's gonna be times when he wins. That because, like I said, he gets paid too. But you gotta find a way to analyze the guy you're going against. It's all about what kind of sets he's giving you. Is he a quick puncher? Is he a slow puncher? So we got a guy on our team, Marcus. Marcus is a quick setter. So he's a guy. Well, Jump setter. He's a guy that's a bigger guy, but he can move, but not like you. If you get him dancing, that's how he gets beat. So if you got a guy that likes to jump set you, like real, the jump, jump in your chest and stuff like that, 
the best thing for me is to hit him here and swipe. Because that, because jump setters are guys who are overly aggressive. They wanna, they wanna maul you. They wanna hit you in the mouth and all those kind of things. So if Zach wants to jump set me, I let him. I just, I just, I just. There's so many things you can do with a jump setter just because they just give it to you. Or if a guy's a leaner, Zach told you yesterday, he put his head into a block. And what the guy do? Knock his hands down. Like it, you gotta figure out who you're playing against. A lot of these kids, it's a, we tell them to go rush the passer, they're just running. They just, all right, coach, they're not, they're not looking at nothing, they're not using their hands, none of that stuff. You gotta be, you gotta be able to identify what you're getting. If that's a guy that likes to, you know, punch with the outside arm, I'm a, chop, I'm a club, I'm a rip, or I'm a swim. If I'm going to the inside, I know he has a weak inside hand. I'm gonna take a step here, he put it in, swipe, and I'm gonna get across. Me, I like bull rushing. Like I'm, I'm like a, that's just my bread and butter. If I see a guy and he's pissing me off, put my hand in the ground, I take a step, I'm here all day. I put him on the quarterback, and you, and you, like you tell me, you got guys who are strong enough to do it, but everybody's different. You can't. You can kind of generalize what you're doing. Like if you got a guy that's good at, you know, speed rushing, if the speed is his thing, to get a guy to, to work outside chop. If you got a guy, like I said, speed, scissors, things like that. If you got a kid, hey coach, that's that's not my game. <coughs> if he's a power guy, inside move, chop clubs, things like that, inside, boom, here. Things of that nature. But you gotta drill those things. You gotta give your guys something to do. For me, I feel like every pass rusher has to master two, like two and one counter. You got to have something that, you know, you can counter off when you got, you know, because like I said, they watch film and they're analyzing two. You got to have something that you can counter with. But the biggest thing is get off. You got to get off the rock and put him in a position where he has to come get you. Because every time you make him come get you, now you got him where you want him because Remember, remember yesterday, right? Hips. Yeah. He's beating me off that fucking ball. I have no choice but to open up. And the good guys. So that over. If I, he takes a step at me, boom. He, I'm here. He's overreaching me. I can just, just like that, and throw him by and use his weight against him. Like, but those, but all those things come through like film study. I understand. And we'll go through a lot. Like tomorrow, when we talk about what drills we're running, the kind of things we'll pick certain passwords moves we want to teach the guys. But you gotta give your guys an idea. I gotta take Zach to my spot. I can't let Zach dictate where I wanna go, if that makes sense. So it kinda depends on the guy you're playing against. Like for me, I like side scissors when I'm going inside. Like my teammate Caleb, he does that a lot. Like he'll take a step here, get him to bite here, and side scissors to get him across. My only thing is that, like when you side scissors, and you miss, yeah. like, they're gonna lock your ass up. So if I were to miss, like, you see what happens? So with me, if I'm coming inside, I wanna take that cross shot. Because when I cross him, now he can't recover because I, I've, I've trapped this hand. So an uh, easy drill, like even Zach can do it. So put your hand on. So we're gonna work, like, this is what we're gonna work like tomorrow so you guys can see it. One, two, three. So you try it. You. So one. Which one's the second one? This is defense defensive shit, bro. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. I'm done. <laughs> but it's just that simple. So you start you start walking like you guys can literally you can do that with your kids because it, it's hand fighting. It's getting their hands ready because the biggest thing in defense, especially when you're rushing the passer, you gotta have active hands. And it's just little things like that, like we talked about, like flexibility, stretching, it's just little things that something is better than nothing. And especially when you're trying to progress something and get the island more involved, when you do that, it's gonna make things run a lot smoother. As far as the edge <coughs> rushing, it's the same thing. When you're on the edge, you're rushing a guy like Zach on the edge, you wanna use your speed. You wanna get him to where he has to kick wide. Only because 
that makes more room for your D tackle. Because he has to, your, the tackle has to honor the end, especially like, we got like Miles. Like, they got to honor Miles just because they're going to, because Miles, yeah. But <laughs> they just got to honor him, right? So that, so sometimes they'll kick really far off. And what we'll do is that we'll run a game or something. And that's like the next level of things. But you, you get what I'm saying? Like, once we start progressing, like, those are things that we can start incorporating in once we get more detail with things. And then uh, the chop, dip, rip is simple. You're rushing off the edge. You rush, you chop, you dip, you rip. Like, it's simple. Like, <laughs> it's literally all you do is chop, dip. That's the biggest part. And rip. Because that what did Zach say yesterday? Bending. What did I talk about? Pad level. Like, you can't rush standing up. Cause that's what Zach wants. He wants me all high, so he can. So, cause I mean, Zach is athletic. So you you gotta remember, like these guys get paid too. If I'm rushing here, he's just gonna keep punching. He's looking at me. He's looking. But if I start hand fighting, if I'm here, if I'm low, he can't do that. And then speed of power is great. When you're when you're kicking wide and you're trying to get out there, remember we talked about yesterday, right? We don't want that outside foot to be what in the air. So that if I'm doing this, this. He's going to catch me like that. And I've seen guys who put, you said what? Yeah, exactly. What happened? The offensive tackle took a step as soon as Khalil punched. And, like, that's what happened. <laughs> like, so, for instance, like, I'll show you if, if it plays. If it does not play, all this film will show tomorrow. We're literally cutting each other in half. I have half the time of the so watch. Film. So offensive lineman kicks, I put him on the ground, then I jump. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But I, the reason why I was able to put him on the ground is because he became off balance. He became off balance, I used my long arm because a lot of things, and that's one of the easiest things that we can teach is a long arm because one arm is longer than two just because it's just natural. So if I'm rushing and I'm here, like if I'm rushing, this is where guys get in trouble because they're rushing, but they're here. What you gotta do, because he'll do that. He'll do it. I, I, exactly. I've, I've had that happen to me before. So what you gotta do, you gotta switch it up. You gotta be here, because now what happens is that I got him at an angle and he's elongated. So if he puts his hand up, I can just grab it. You know what I'm saying? Like there's so many things that you can do off these techniques. That's why I say you master two, you have one counter. And that's pretty much it for the passer. And then accelerate through the kill zone. That's the most important because you don't want to do all that damn work and then <laughs> miss the set. You know what I'm saying? So you got to tell your guys, like, <coughs> accelerate through. Attack the upfield shoulder. Because the quarterbacks, especially, like, because you guys, you say you guys are more naturally, like, shorter, stockier guys, like, but you're shifty. So when you play shifty quarterbacks, what are they going to do? They're going to let you run up on them and you don't attack that upfield shoulder, they're gonna roll out, spin, you're gonna miss, and then all your homeboys are gonna be like, what the fuck, man? Like, it's that simple. So do you guys have any like questions? Can you, uh, can you explain the way the separation, instead of picking up the hands, throwing it out to the old Oh, line. okay. So, so that all of us can know how to attack, see, attack that and show all the kids. Okay, so the first thing, do you guys have like sleds here? Only go on high. We don't even use it. All right, so. All right, so watch. Watch. So like you can, you can get things like this, like. You guys are strong, but you know what I'm saying? Like, if, even, if you, even if you're here, you know, you throw some padding on it or something. Even, or use the goal posts. Everybody got goal posts, right? Yeah. Yeah. That's what I use when I'm on my sports games, the goal posts. But, like, what you do is that you're here, just like that. Just, just fast, like, just keep going. And what that does is it, it trains those quick twitch muscles. And that's how you go from the ground to the mat. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. You go from the ground to the man. You don't wind up. You don't forklift. You go from the ground to the man you're contacting. To because throw. you throw. If you're mad, yeah. <laughs> like, but no, not all the time. Because when you throw, what happens is it makes you a leaner. And I wish that other clips. Let me see if I can show it. But what happens is that 
if you lean too much, you're gonna run without your eyes, and your your your, your body follows your head. And if, if you're falling forward, you just you're gonna fall. Like that's just what it is. So I don't tell guys to throw only because sometimes that puts you in a compromisable position. Yeah, he's like just like he's not talking about like blast. You know what I'm saying? That's where your eyes. That's what I learned throughout my first year was that when I first started playing. Like, I'm, I'm a quick to guy, I'm strong, I'm fast. Like, my game is, I'm going to get past you, and I'm stronger than you, you're not going to block me. That's, that's, my, that's how I play. But what happens is that when you think you're stronger and faster and you don't play with your eyes, what's going to happen is that you're going to take a step, so you just, just reach it. Yeah. Like, and where am I now? Where's my gap? Right there, right? I'm reached. And all those guys going to do the smart players, it's just going to just Turn. put it right here. And now I'm stuck. You know what I'm saying? So that's why you don't want to throw. Because if you throw, you might throw. Like, and you you know you're about to blast him. Because I do it. I used to do it all the time. Like, I, I throw him. Boom. I turn him. I'm like, yeah. Damn. Ball's on. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So you got to you gotta lead with your hands. Like, you can throw, but throw with your eyes. You know what I'm saying? Like, if I see Zach and I'm in my stance and know he's coming, like, I'm here. You know what I'm saying? Because now... I'm not throwing, you know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm, my eyes are taking me. My my eyes are taking me to my target. I'm looking at Zach, he moves, I'm here. You and know what I'm saying? And even if I do get my hands for some reason in him, if he's right here in my hip, I lose as an offensive tackle. And even if I do stay in front of him, either the running back's going to run into me and that's a butt block, or this guy's going to make it. <coughs> and, like, when you look at it that way, like, it's really that simple. Like you, you gotta, you can't just think that. Like I said before, the, the time where you're just gonna bully everybody is over, because like they're getting better in the NFL, they're getting better in college, they're getting better in high school. Like I've seen some high school kids that look like NFL players. So you gotta, like, it's it now it comes to who's the most technically sound. You get what I'm saying? Like who, who knows what like. I'm, I'm looking at my strike point. I'm looking at my target. I know that if he comes here, I gotta stay my ground. I gotta stay here. I can't get reached. Like I want, like, and sometimes you are gonna throw. Like, check whoop ass. That's what I call it. Like, bump the play. Bump what coach said. I'm checking whoop ass. I'm whooping his ass. That's it. I don't care what happened on the play, but I know that it, I got a personal problem with him, and I'm finna solve it. And you, and sometimes that happens. Cause what I say. Football is the most egotistical sport in the world. You know what I'm saying? But you got to be able to, you know, put the reins on it. You know what I'm saying? Like, when you talk to your players, like, sometimes you're going to be a coach. Like, he's going to hit you with the Kanye arms or whatever. But you got to be able to, like, all right, you know what? That's cool. But let's let's do it this way. You know what I'm saying? And as coaches, you got to be able to talk to your players, you, you know? Because you got to put yourself in their shoes because you were once there for the guys who played. You got to look at it and don't look at it like, Oh man, what the hell is this kid doing? No, be like, hey, how can I help you become a better player? Like, I know a lot of coaches like to yell and scream, but if you're gonna do all that, make sure you grab him after and tell him what he gotta do. Because a lot of times I see I've seen so many coaches cuss a kid out and the kid goes on and doesn't know what he did wrong. And then he keeps doing it, he keeps getting cussed out, and next thing you know he stops playing. So like that's where you as coach, like Zach talked about it yesterday about like leaving your pride at the door. And like I told the coaches yesterday, like pride comes before the fall. And as prideful men, we gotta check our ego at the door and understand that we gotta pay it forward. We gotta we gotta help the next man be better. Cause like if we want the island to grow, if we want football to be here, if we want to be prominent, because you guys have the players, like you guys have the talent. But now it's how can we put this talent in a box and then start to build on it. You know what I'm saying? And once you do that, like I feel like the sky's the limit because it doesn't matter where you start is where you finish. And that's just my philosophy on things. So any more questions? I got one more. Um, is there any advantage, you know, like you're playing on right side defense or putting, using right hand down? Um, three point, or if you're left side, you left hand down? My is that, philosophy that help when it comes to what hand I have, I usually put the my inside hand down towards the ball because it just gives you a better angle, if that makes sense.
So if I know that I'm playing three technique, and I know that I got to strike this guy, I'm going to put the hand that I want to strike with down. You know what I'm saying? So that way, like I said, it's from here to here. You know what I'm saying? Because that way, I'm not off balance. Because if I'm here, what happens is that I'm closed off. So I take a step, and this hand is just dangling. You know what I'm saying? It kind of puts me in a bad spot, so I'll show it was that. So if my hand is, I'll show it the wrong way first. So my outside hand is down, but the ball is inside, I'm putting myself at a disadvantage. Because I may be able to get off, but now I ain't got nothing but the forearm. If I step with this arm, I mean with this leg, and my hands are here, I step. Now I can put my hands on before he can put his hands on me. And like, you see guys, like a lot of times when I, I grab their wrist and hit them in the chest. Just because it traps them, but like, that's just what I do. But like, you, you get what I'm saying? Like, it's just the little things, like the little minute things that you start incorporating into your, your, your kids and the players that you're coaching, and you look up, and they'll be where we're standing. You know what I'm saying? But you gotta harp on it now. Because it's, it's so important to do it early rather than later. Like, you got the special cases, like kids, like like, like me, like I was a late bloomer. But like, not everybody's like that. Like, if you, I advise everybody to do it now. You know what I'm saying? Don't wait till tomorrow, do it now. Coach's question about, you know, should we differentiate what we do with the youth? Yes, dumb it down a little bit, but the reason why I do, do get, get in your just alignment right here. In the NFL, remember how yesterday we were watching some of the college film and I said a telltale for when Notre Dame was going to run a game was the three technique would switch his hand and have his hand side out. Because when I'm looking at this defensive lineman, for him, he, Larry talked about defensive line and when he's talking about the stagger and the stance, right? He has to step with that outside first or that back <coughs> foot first. So if I see that he has that, I know that he has to take one step, take one step, before he can even come inside, he has to take that next step and plant off of that. So what we should teach on the island is no more switching hands. In the NFL, they don't switch hands. If they're going to run a game, they're going to change their stagger a little bit. Instead of being all the way back, and you can talk about that, yeah. instead of being all the way, if he's all the way back, he's not going to run a game. He's not going outside. He can't. He, he has to put his hand, his, his foot down. But if you're switching hands all the time, that's why he said he's always, the whole NFL is almost like that. And there's some unorthodox guys like J.J. Watt does that and changes it up a little bit. But that's because he's fucking J.J. Watt. You get what I'm saying? So teach the inside hand what he's talking about. It just, it just makes it that much easier and it keeps the lingo. You know what I'm saying? Like you want to streamline it. You want to make this thing as simple as possible, that way you can build off of it, if that makes sense. Like, you don't want it over complicated. You want, you want kids to be like, all right, I'm on the left side, I gotta put my, like, no. You, all right, my hand, the hand that I have down is based off the person I'm aligned on. So if I'm in a four high, I'm being here. So if I'm in a four high, I have my left hand down because this is, this is the hand that I'm striking with. And it's going from, like I told you, from the <coughs> ground to the man. We're not, we're not doing the whole, like we're doing, nah, we go from here to here. And when you do that, it's, it's like that. But when you, when you start doing the forearm flipper or you're doing the forklifts, like you're going to get your ass blocked. Because like I said, like the guys are getting better. They're getting faster, they're getting stronger. You got to be so sound in your technique that, that all that other stuff doesn't matter. Now it's who's the best technician rather than who's stronger, who's faster. You know what I'm saying? Like, some of the best D tackles are short. Aaron Donald, the best defensive tackle in the NFL, is six foot, 287. You know what I'm saying? Like, two time defensive player of the year. You got, like, it did, like, the size doesn't matter. Like, you can't coach that, you can't coach this. But you can coach me using my hands, me bending, you know, getting low. You know, me understanding that if I'm getting a certain set, how to play, you can coach all those things. Because at the end of the day, I played against guys who are bigger than him. No, you guys, you guys, no, 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 no. So now we're trying to decide, okay, is this guy's good defensive tackle. Now, is there any uh, advantage, like let's say he's, we're trying to put him a defensive tackle, but he's left-handed or right-handed, does it matter? Does that help any? I mean, if he's a left-handed, we I mean, can put him on the right. So it comes over to the right. Yeah. 
Uh, I mean, you. I, I feel like I would just tell them to learn. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, when I started football, I could not get in a three. Like, I played nose guard from a two-point stance because I just didn't have enough upper body strength, upper body strength to, you know, hold my own weight because I was overweight. So I had to, I had to play like this, and then I had to learn how to put my hand down. And then I had to learn how to put this hand. That's why we talk about don't wait. You know what I'm saying? Like, don't wait. And you're going to get some kids that you know who are from other schools or places you've never been before, and they come to your school, and they've just been so rooted in their ways that you kind of have to work around them. But if you get these kids early enough to where you can teach them certain things, like kids are very malleable. You know what I'm saying? Like, you can mold them, and you can shape them in the way you want them to go, but you have to do it early enough to where it's beneficial. So I would say if you got a kid that's left-handed, then every day after practice, he's working on his right-handed stance. You know what I'm saying? Because at the end of the day, a man can't want more for you than you. Like, if you want something bad enough, you got to find a way to get it. Like, as a coach, like, you guys, you can, you can tell us you can lead a horse to water, but you cannot make him drink. So, like, that's just what it is. So you, you got you to gotta just coach these kids. That's why you're here. You're coaching them. You're teaching them. But it's going to take them themselves to want to be better. You, it's going to take something inside them for, hey, I, I want to play. I want to play in college. I want to go to the NFL. I want to do all the things. But as coach, you got to set that example, and you got to help them. You can't, you can't cuss them out, and you got to teach them. Like the best coaches are the best teachers. You know, does that make sense? Like they're able to simplify the game enough to where it's not too complex for anybody to understand. Like if a guy's struggling, they break it down to something they understand. That's that's how you coach, because you're 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 their guide to where they're trying to go. And their reflection to you. So, I got a question. Um, given the opportunity for a clean shot at the line of scrimmage or behind the line of scrimmage, uh, how much, um, how much thought should you give to trying to disrupt the ball and cause a turnover uh, as opposed to? Tackling? I would say that's huge. You know, like it's a double-edged sword because a lot of guys are just so happy that they made the tackle that you know that he, they feel like everybody should be else should be happy that they made the tackle but at the same time like our issue at the Browns was we were dominant you know stopping the run like great defense you know our issue was that we didn't get any turnovers and that's 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 football that's that's NFL football like it's turnovers like turnovers will Nine, nine times out of ten will determine who wins the game. And as a defensive player, like, when you get those clean shots, like, yeah, take them. You know, because it's football. But the special guys, the guys who are different from everyone, they're going to be the ones that understand that. I'm going to make this tackle, tackle, but at the same time, I'm going to find a way to get the ball out. You know what I'm saying? Because when you get the ball out, you give it back to your offense. Yeah, so, like, if Zach's the ball carrier and I'm behind him. Can I borrow this? Yeah. Thanks. So the first one that you can do is that you want to secure the tackle. So he's coming from behind you. You grab him here. You can either rake it if he has the ball. Like So let's say if it's high and tight, do this. Just punch it out. I'm oh, sorry. Yeah. It's, it's going to fall. I just don't want to pick it up. Oh, for real? Yeah, so yeah. Just, just. <laughs> That's a fun one. Just keep punching it, you know what I'm saying? Like, I was like, damn. No, I know, right? <laughs> but yeah, so secure it. That way you don't miss the tackle. Because like I said, you don't want people to be pissed off you miss the tackle. But at the same time, you want to secure it, punch, get the ball out. The second way, if he's a guy who's kind of wide and he kind of runs with the ball all wide, you grab it, you rake it, and take it away. Is that simple? And then sometimes, like, quarterback, quarterback, all right, so you're rushing. You attack the upfield shoulder. Not yet. So you attack it. You're running, you're running, you're running. You see him, he tries to roll out. You grab him here. You come around, fumble. Before the tuck. Yeah, you got to get him before it tuck. So what happens, you know, they tuck and run. But see, when I talk about attacking the upfield shoulder, because a lot of guys, what they'll do, if they'll get here, they'll, they'll feel the sack coming. They'll get really excited. Spin, like roll out spin. Miss. I've, I've, I've had it happen <laughs> too many times when I was in college. 
So like we talk about attacking that upfield shoulder, the shoulder's up there. So we're here, but we know that he, if we grab him here, we can come around and secure it. But if we just attack straight forward, what's gonna happen is that these, these are their quarterbacks. They're just gonna, like, cause you don't, we don't tackle enough as defensive linemen to be used to the whole, like, we just get really wide-eyed and we're just ready to splatter his ass. And like, what happens is that you miss. <laughs> so you gotta teach your guys, like, when you get the sack, secure the sack. You know, and worst case scenario, if you can't get the ball, bump it, get the sack. But the best play in football is this, sack, force fumble. Because that's it, that, that's, the, that's, the, that's the best play in football. Because <laughs> now all you got to do is that. You, you don't even have to tackle him to do that. Sack. <laughs> that's it. Now, I'm telling you, that's the best play in football. You got a question, Coach? On that one, instead of, uh, I, I saw that you tomahawk down, but yeah. also coming up as well, or prefer the top? Well, I mean, the only time, it depends on the back. Like, it, like so Zach's a guy who runs out like this, right? <coughs> if he runs out, so I wish we actually had a ball, but like a guy who's like this, you can punch, because what happens is that he's exposing the ball. So you hear, and you punch it out. But that's only for guys who run wild, you know. Most guys, most running backs in the NFL are, are taught, you know, high and tight. The times you'll get those are receivers. So let's say you're a, a D lineman and you're covering the screen, and that's another topic we'll talk about like next time. But when you come out the stack, you know, on the screen, and you're you're running, and the guy doesn't doesn't see you, those are the ones that you know they that run wild that you can just get and all of a sudden just punch. And the ball, because they're not used to getting hit by people our size, and and those are the type of things that, as like I said, as the island progresses, will be more in tune with. You know what I'm saying? But the first part is, like I said, you know, the tomahawk, the punch down, the rake, and you those can, are the basics that you can learn. When you're scouting a team that you're about to play this upcoming week, pay attention to the quarterback's tendencies. We knew when we were going against Kaiser against Notre Dame that he did not, when he had pressure and he did do a rollout or he did this, he had the ball out here. So that week in practice, our coach worked, get the fucking ball out. Take time to scout and know who you're going against. If you're going against a running back and he wants to look, especially in high school, you get a lot of these dudes who be trying to act like they're saucy and they're Reggie, you know what I'm saying, and they're out here and all this stuff. Tell your team that week, this week we're working on getting the ball out and coach that. Especially guys like like they run like this, like especially like guys who run like that, run like that are like your screen guys, your real shifty guys, because they're just they're so used to like this motion right here. Like when a big guy hit them, the ball coming out. But you got to tell your guys that this was one point that I got to make sure I make because my coach will kick my ass if I don't say it. Every D lineman, like for forever in the island of Guam, like has to run to the football got to like there's no there's no there's no excuse on effort you know what i'm saying doing practice. oh yeah so in practice we got we got this pursuit drill right like we if we don't run to the ball like it's up downs and it's not just you it's the entire team or you just watch while your homeboys do up downs you know what i'm saying you and that's the worst <laughs> so like we always got to run to the like, We got a GPS tracker on our jerseys that tell us the amount that we've run, if we picked up max speed, all those kind of things. That's real technical. But D linemen are so in, like so valuable just because of the amount of impact that you can have. You know what I'm saying? Like when you when guys get on the screen, they get on things like that. They don't expect us to you know to come out and you know run to the ball and then get and knock the ball. You know what I'm saying? Like. Those are the things that will separate your guys. You get what I'm saying? When, when they see D-linemen running, it's like, damn, now we got to account for more people. Because usually what happens is that a D-lineman will get off, the play will be gone, and then he'll just, and he's just like this. You know what I'm saying? He'll just be chilling out. You know what I'm saying? Or the play is run, he, you know, he did his job. The ball, there's a screen, but he's just jogging. You know what I'm saying? Like, you got to get your guys to run to the football because you, you just never know. You never know what can happen because they just don't expect it. They don't expect somebody, they expect a guy who's 200 pounds, 210 to hit him. 
when somebody who's 320, 315. He's running the ball down. You get what I'm saying? Is running the ball down mm -hmm. and then hitting them. And you're like, damn, coach, hey, I don't want that screen no more. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> And on top of that, too, a lot of coaches who are coaching this old school football, you can eliminate conditioning, post-practice conditioning. If you're just running a team period on both offense and defense, and how you do that is they're taught in our practice, and the Cleveland Browns and a lot of teams do this too, but the Cleveland Browns is during team ball, and it doesn't even matter. Like if, if Kaiser throws the ball over there, he's running the ball down. And they got to touch him. And you ha he has to touch the ball carrier. It, it's funny because you'll watch the film. The dude will be 40 yards down the field, and Larry can't come back to the line of scrimmage until, until he chases, chases the ball. Down. Offensive line, how that switches. We're so much, okay, made the block, yes, touchdown. Fuck no. They got to cover it. Cover, because guess what that teaches? Not only are we conditioning too, so every time we're going, okay, and usually we only have to be like 10 yards, like run 10 yards after the play and go and then get back in the huddle. But that teaches not only are they going to do that in the game and run the ball down, but what if that ball carrier does fuck up and he does drop the ball? You're there to pick it up. It works both ways. So, like, tell your guys, like, everybody has got to, like, if anybody here lazy is still football doing, is out. Yeah, if anybody here is still doing in-season conditioning, it's done. Take it out. There's no point. Because you're not, you're training your guys to be sprinters, and that's not what they are. They're football players. Running gassers and shit? That's off-season. That's getting your wind and shit. Like, when you coach, I'm sorry. Bar, I don't so. mean to offend you, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> take it away. <laughs> take, take, take it away. <laughs> I'm telling you, like, like it's, it's just, and coaches, you, can, you can't make the game more difficult than what it is. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's still football. It's still the game that you've been playing since you were kids. Don't make it harder than what it is. You just got to, you got to find ways to add certain things that are always football minded, you know what I'm saying? Like like we talked about with the conditioning, like yes, you're conditioning your guys, but you're also getting them football ready. Because think about it, a guy who, who does it in practice, if I run in, in practice, why the hell would I run the game? You know what I'm saying? Now you got guys running down, chasing down ball carriers, and your opponent's looking like, damn, like we didn't really account for these guys being down there. And it just changes the whole dynamic. But like in order to be more progressive, like you gotta do more. And like growth without change is impossible. So you got to look at yourself in the mirror and see what you can do as coaches to make things better. And I think that's our time. So I appreciate you guys for letting me talk to you. Was there, anybody, was there any other questions? I got a question right here. What's up? Yes, I didn't get that. I you said know. what? Don't uh, on what you mean? Level I hey, hey, shh. I, I didn't catch that. Oh, what you said about the conditioning? In season. In season. In season. If you're running gassers after practice, you're, 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 you're gassing your guys out. And you're, like you said, you're coaching them to do sprints. Instead of that, take that away. Is it tiring in team period to, to catch and touch the dude every time? At first, yeah. Yeah, at but first, once but you then do what? it, it's nothing. You know what I'm saying? But you're training yourself. You see what I'm saying? I see that point because I like the. Like at the youth football stuff, the best defense that I've seen is that backside DB or the linebacker making the play. Yeah, cause because because those are the ones that are football. conditioned and all that. Because they're talking. Oh, most football. definitely. Like, and the biggest thing is just like we talked about before. Like, you got to find ways to not beat your guys down because like the season is long, and if you got guys, you know, running, you know, running sprints after practice, and you know, on top of practice, you're just breaking your own guys down, and you're wondering why your players are getting hurt and they're not performing the way they need to. So you gotta find a way to take that mileage off their legs after practice and use it in practice to where it's productive. Cause now it's like they're they're fast paced, they're ready to stretch, they're going. And then after practice they're done. Because there's what's the like if you have anything left after practice, then why did you practice in the first place? You know what I'm saying? Like you shouldn't you shouldn't have enough energy to run sprints after practice. If that makes sense. And because you're now doing, you're counterproductive. If you're doing anything after practice it should be technical work. Exactly. It should be working your pass set. It should be working your get off. It should be working the dip drive drill. It shouldn't be sprints. If you as a coach feel the need that you need to condition your team during the season because they're not producing, you had a fucked up off season and that's your fault. Facts. Straight up. And that's why we have to take the pride away from it. 
Why are we running guys anymore? No one does it in the NFL. Why the fuck should we do it in Guam? Why? Because, because we've been doing it forever? We've been sucking forever too. Straight up. You think, you think back when football had started that Ni the Nigerians weren't held back too? But no, they changed their fucking atmosphere and they got guys like this. Why can't we do the same thing for little Chamorro and Island boys? So what conditioning, for example, you're saying? So, all right, for example, uh, for... It's like, slow it, uh, change, change it up, but yeah. um, so your recommendation is not to run... When we're running, I got you, coach. When we're running... Because, like, uh, oh, you know, there's some kids that, uh, you know, run, are, are new. Yeah. Okay, we got kids that are new. And at the youth level, like, like, at the youth level, and then you, 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 you don't want to teach them the technique, right? But then they're gassing up on a technique that you're doing. So you're saying they knew in the middle of the season, right? Like, like they just got there training, and, and he's going to get alignment. Right? No, no, they don't don't play. You don't play. Everybody, I can't hear him. I can't hear him. Everybody, I know at the high school level we can do that, but we're talking about. Youth level now. Okay, so we're talking about youth. Yes, that's why I'm kind of like. So what do you? So so do you not? Do you not work with the kids? Before I mean, before you start playing games, like you you work on like season for kids starts in the fall. Right? I mean, I'm going down to youth level now. No, no, no. I'm with, I'm with you. I'm with you. So like, so like, tell me when does youth football? When's the first game of the season in youth football? What, what, what time of the year? August. August? First week of August. When do you get a hold of the kids before June. that? June. Why are, we not condition, we're, why are we not conditioning through June? You get what I'm saying? But when we hit August, huh? Huh? Then the question is, is I understand that I mean, but I'm just I'm asking the question is is I no, no, I'm with you, Coach. I'm not talking about you specific, right? So you're saying the first game is the first week of August, right. and you get a hold of them in June. June, if I was the coach right here, this is the bottom line. If I'm the coach, June, we're not only working our technique and getting teaching plays and things like that. Right. Then we're also running at the end of practice. Yes, our camp, and we're, we're, we're still doing our camp, and when we get OTAs and stuff before the season, we're conditioning. Like, like we're still doing sprints with the strength coach. We're still running a little bit after practice. We're getting our wind up. But we're talking about in season. Like when yeah, you know, like when August first hits, our our conditioning should be during practice and chasing the ball down, both offensively and defensively. Okay.